Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about replacing a quick connect steering cable on an outboard and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. In case you're here from the future and you're looking to just learn how to replace one of these cables, I'll get straight into it. But for subscribers, uh, after this video, I'll start talking a bit about why I'm redoing some of the older videos and show you the website that I'm working on that these videos are being made to support. All right, let's get into it. Let's duck behind the dash now, see what kind of helm we've got. Looks like the cable's locked in with a bolt rather than the R-clip push release. So I'll grab a little socket and we'll get this old cable out. It looks like the helm may have survived its dunking because it's attempting to push the cable. The cable's been underwater, so it's pretty seized. And that was, I think, one or two years ago now, so chances of recovering it with the uh, air compressor and oil technique I think is pretty low. I'll put a link to that in the description though for those interested. So let's try and get it out. This bolt locks the collar of the steering cable in. Once this is out just widening the helm should push the cable out. There we go. With the bolt. There we go. Just turn the helm. she comes nice and easy this release mechanism slightly different on different helms but the principles the same this cable here is where the excess lives when you're turning to port so I think the helms are right you know sometimes these die too uh, this one looks like it can be opened. Some of them are riveted, so you'd have to drill the heads off the rivet, open it, then put bolts in or something. Kind of glad it's okay, because these bolts look like they'd need cutting off. Anyway, saves some money too, which is great. Cable's already disconnected from the outboard because we just put the outboard on, but you'll see the process for disconnecting it while we reconnect it. It's pretty much the same backwards. You know, I think it might actually be easier to take the whole cable out the back. Let's see if we can read a length off this. Not seeing a part number on it. All right, looks like we're gonna have to measure it. All right, let's head up to the house, measure this, see if we've got one that's the right length. I think I've only got short ones at home, but they're not hard to get and you never know your luck. Bit of a trek up to the house, but that's okay. Probably need the exercise. One day I'll get a workshop again. Just sitting here in the boat, and I realise there is the part number. C star, the last two digits, 15, means it's a 15 foot cable. We'll go up to the house anyway to see what we've got. I don't think anything that long. Sadly, this motor cruiser here sank yesterday. So uh, Adrian and I are working on getting it started tomorrow. Hopefully it hasn't been out of the water too long. I've only got shorter cables here, so I'm going to have to go and buy a new one. But while we're here, let's cut the old one open, given it's all corroded anyway, and take a look inside. The question that's always been on my mind is how far the spirals go. So here's the reinforcing. That's what makes the cable so hard to bend. Then hot from grinding. Hang on, I'll get some pliers. Oh, look at this, this'll do. Then a nylon sort of sleeve inside. Looks like the spiral goes the whole way. That was the thing I was never sure of. Was there only spiral at the end for the helm? But you can see all this dry crud. That's supposed to be the lubrication for the cable, the grease for it. You can force oil down with compressed air, but I think you're fighting a losing battle by the time it's been sunk and then sitting up in air for a couple of years. Hello little bird, what are you doing in my workshop? Hmm? Come for a visit. No, I don't have any seed on me. Maybe I can find some for you, hang on. 
You know, I'm supposed to be working, not feeding the birds. All right. Yeah, you. Daffy gets you later in the video because you're a bully. Isn't he? Okay, one brand new steering cable, 15 foot. Let's go throw it in. All right. Let's open our new cable. Gonna leave this cover on because there's grease under here. We don't want the grease coming off or dirt getting in. So what I'm thinking, let's push the helm end through the same hole on the, uh, on the transom and then slide the other end into the outboard. This here is the tilt tube. It's called the tilt tube because it's where the trim tilt tilts the outboard up, so hence the name. But the steering cable also goes through it. Old grease will get in here, it'll get salt, it'll get hard, it'll dry out, and it'll make it quite hard to install the cable. I've got some videos on cleaning these. The gold standard tool really is a reamer, specifically of the correct diameter. Uh, bit of a custom tool, a little bit hard to find, reasonably expensive. You can use brushes on a drill, that kind of stuff. But fortunately, this one's quite clean. The boat sank, the outboard didn't. Wash. It's worth noting that these two grease nipples only put grease between the bracket here and the tilt tube to help the outboard trim up and down. There's a nylon bushing in here as well. These don't have anything to do with lubricating the steering. This part of the cable extends and retracts to turn the outboard. This part here becomes a fixed point because it screws onto the tilt tube. This part here attaches to the drag link and moves backwards and forwards to turn the outboard. You need to lubricate this. What you lubricate it with is, you know, a matter of debate. Traditionally, my go-to was always white lithium grease. It's considered to be quite good for a marine environment. I tend to err a little bit more towards an oil now. The big trouble is the grease will start to go hard and, and really become more of an adhesive than a lubricant. I'm going to try, because it's all I've got with me at the moment, is actually a dry PTFE. Let's get the cable through the hull first and then we'll put a bit of that on. We can always pull it out and re-lubricate it. You should regularly anyway. But cleaning it is really important. Don't let old grease build up and become an adhesive. All right, let's keep pulling it through a bit. One of the trickiest parts of this job can be the bend, getting the cable started. Depending on the design of the hull, the transom, all that kind of thing, I have actually had boats where I've had to lift the outboard off the transom, get the steering cable in and reinstall it. Worst case scenario, but you can hit that situation. Now this should slide in relatively nicely, but the angle of the cable can be what makes it hard. You need to be able to tell where it's binding up because of tension and where it's binding up because of old grease. See, that's pretty good in the scheme of things. Certainly didn't take any real force to push it through. All right, let's go get a shifter and tighten this collar up. These things need to be done up pretty snug because if the steering comes undone at speed, you can have a pretty nasty accident. All right, I don't have battery power at the moment, but I might go and uh, release the bypass on the trim tilt. I think this is gonna be easier to do with the outboard out of the way, so let's do that. Down here is a bypass valve that allows us to drop the motor without having any electric power for the trim tilt. Close it off again so I don't wonder why it's not trimming. <laughs> There we go. Because we need to rotate this and get this drag link on, it's easier if it's pushed out more. To that end, I think I'll install it in the helm now before we do the drag link so we can turn the wheel to adjust it. All right, here we are under the dash again. Once we get the cable in, we're gonna use this bolt, put it back in, and this is what locks the outer cable into position so the inner cable can move relative to it. 
So I've got a little bit of lubricant on that as well. Now we can take our sleeve off. We need to come in and then once we're in, we're just rotating the helm with my right hand here, counterclockwise to bring the cable in. The excess is going to come out into this tube. the locking bolt in to make sure it can't come out again. As I was saying, the mechanism for locking it changes. This is a slightly more old school method. There tends to be a R-clip push release on modern ones. But the principle's the same. You can see here the cable's pretty much all the way in. The way I remember that is turn to port to make it short. So by turning to starboard to make it longer, doesn't really rhyme at all, does it? But the opposite is obviously the way we want to go. Now, to line this up, obviously the output's turning, so we don't need to, you know, move it to line it up. But it just gives you a little bit more flex to get it together. Here you can see on the end of the drag link, two washers and a nylock. Washer on the top, washer on the bottom, nylock on the bottom. Oh, can't get this nylock off with fingers, which is a good sign. Otherwise it wouldn't be much of a nylock. If you could get it off with your fingers, I'd be replacing it absolutely. Right, one washer off. Down. And nut. Now the nylock does the work of holding the nut on. If this separates, you're in a world of hurt, so make sure that doesn't happen. But it's not about making it tight, because you don't want to pinch here. This actually rotates and articulates. I think you'll find there's not enough thread to actually pinch it anyway. All right, let's turn the wheels, see what it feels like. Not too bad. The helm sounds a little crunchy, it has been underwater, but uh, you know, if down the track that gets replaced, not a huge job. Basically, take the cable out, same way we took it out before, three bolts, new helm, away you go. As you can see, it's a pretty straightforward process. There's subtle differences, like sort of dust seals on the end of the tilt tube on some outboards, a different mechanism for locking the cable into the helm, that kind of thing, but fundamentally, that's the process. One of the more contentious things really, I think, is what you lubricate the cable with. I don't mind the idea of trying something perhaps a bit too light to start with. Um, definitely the worst case scenario is a thick grease that is going to, you know, just congeal and become a glue down the track. It'll actually make it worse, not better. If I was going to go to something a bit heavier, I'd probably go just to say like a motor oil in a little can, that kind of thing. Uh, but definitely avoid just putting swaths of sort of bearing grease on it. At the beginning of the video, I was talking about a new website, which I'll show you in a second. And that website is about bringing a lot of the outboard content into one place to make it easy to find. Rather than searching through YouTube, you can go through the website. When I first started making videos, I picked a lot of the low hanging fruit. You know, steering cable, classic example, carburetors, all these kinds of things that commonly go wrong. The trouble was they were really important topics and they were executed very poorly because I just didn't have the experience yet. So. I'm going to be remaking some of those and make them much better videos. That way I can put them into the website, know they're going to be of value, they're not going to contain, you know, wrong information or just draw it out, have terrible audio, all that kind of stuff. So what I'll do is I'll show you the website and I'll show you where this video is going to live on the website. This is the front page of the website. Uh, apologies, I haven't quite figured out how to get my mouse pointer to show up on OBS yet, but I'll figure something out. Uh, so what you end up with is a front page saying, 
where is your problem? There's a few different tabs um, with some reference stuff so you can look some information up um, using a search. Classic example there is an FAQ I did because I get a lot of questions. It'll give you that one document. Once you've opened that document, you can go and have a look at content. There's things like uh, wiring guides, the FAQ, all that kind of stuff. That'll grow as well. But the main area at the moment is the diagnosis section. So in this case, I'm saying, where have I got a problem? I say midsection, gives you a bit of a description about what the midsection does. Uh, actually, we want swivel bracket because it's a steering problem. And then we go into here. And then you start getting a video per page or an image if there isn't a video and subtopics. So it gives you a bit of a chance to do like a hierarchical search through the videos. Now, in this case, we're gonna say hard to turn. So we're gonna to go to this one and then say the cable is corroded, which is what was happening in our case. Then we got the option to try and repair it or replace it. So this video ultimately will become today's video in about three hours time. Um, so the idea with the website is just to give you a set of questions and navigate you to hopefully help you find the video that's gonna help you solve your problem. Here on the map tab, don't be scared, <laughs> is all the topics uh, mapped out in how they connect. So I could, for example, here I am, the one highlighted in green is the topic you're currently on. And I can see here that, and I can just click on any of these and jump around. So if I went to stiff steering here on the map, it'll take me to that topic rather than having navigated through the hierarchy. So there's a couple of ways to, to find the topic you're after. So my plan is to continue to populate that website with new videos. Some of them will be completely fresh videos that I haven't done before, um, but some will be remakes of old topics, but done using my new mics and being a little bit better edited, etc. Well, thanks for watching, and special thanks to all the Patreons that helped buy the new mics, the streaming setup, all this kind of stuff that's hopefully going to make the videos a lot better in the future. All right, guys, I'll catch you next week. See ya. <laughs> That'll learn him. Yeah. <laughs> Come back, Daisy. Daisy. <laughs> See all their food, and it's like, Come on. Oh, well, we're off again. Come on, Daisy. Come back. Come on. Daisy, come on. Who's the one now?